June 5th, 1967, day one of the war. In the early morning of June 5th, Israel launched a preemptive attack on Egyptian Air Force bases. The Israeli Air Force had come up with a bold, risky, and complex plan involving all but 12 of their approximately 250 jets. The plan required dozens of Israeli squadrons from different bases to rendezvous silently over 11 Egyptian air bases. The first Israeli planes took off at 7.10 a.m. Flying low to avoid radar detection and observing complete radio silence, they began the surprise attack before the Egyptian pilots could scramble and get their jets in the air. After first bombing the runway so that they could not be used, Israeli jets bombed and strafed Egypt's combat aircraft on the ground. In a matter of four hours, Israel destroyed two-thirds of the entire Egyptian air force, the largest in the Arab world. This singular act gave Israel control of the airspace over southern Israel, Egypt and Sinai, providing a great advantage on the southern front and freeing Israel's air force for use on other fronts. A preemptive strike had not been taken lightly. Israel had determined that the 200,000 Arab troops and 1,000 tanks gathered near Israel's borders were poised for action with the goal of destroying Israel. If Israel were to wait for a coordinated Arab strike on all its borders, the future of the country would be at great risk and casualties would be massive. Immediately after the attack on the Egyptian bases, the Israelis sent a message to King Hussein of Jordan saying that Israel would not attack Jordan if Jordan stayed out of the war, even though it meant that the Jewish holy sites of Jerusalem would remain under Jordanian control, inaccessible to Jews. But Jordan had received false information from Egypt claiming massive successful attacks against Israel. Reassured of Arab victory, Jordan rebuffed Israel's offer and launched multiple attacks on Israel. Thousands of mortar shells rained down on Jewish areas of West Jerusalem, hitting civilian locations indiscriminately, including Hadassah Hospital and Mount Zion Church. Because of Israel's narrow nine-mile waistline and Jordanian control of the strategic high ground of the West Bank, Jordan easily shelled civilian locations all the way to Tel Aviv and carried out airstrikes against the coastal communities of Netanya and Kfar Saba. Jordan had aggressively entered the war. Next, Syria and Iraq joined the war by launching attacks inside Israel. Syrian planes attacked Haifa's oil refineries but were destroyed by Israeli forces. They also continued with artillery and heavy machine gun fire on northern Israel and carried out attacks in the valley below the Golan. Later in the afternoon, Israeli jets responded by attacking Jordanian, Syrian and Iraqi air bases. Without the element of surprise, they experienced a number of losses but succeeded in doing great damage to all three Arab air forces. But Israel was still outnumbered and outgunned, taxing the limits of its small military. Despite its efforts to avoid war in the West Bank and Jerusalem, Israel found itself drawn into a war on three fronts, a situation that would ultimately reshape the map of Israel.